My biggest challenge on fatherhood. Hmm. Is being a good father. Is to do your best for each individual. The biggest challenge of being a father. There are various challenges that have come up relating to the various children because each child has their, their moment in time that is challenging to you as a parent. My dad expects me to be. Um... My dad expects me to be a, a good Christian. Um... My dad expects me to be honest, dependable, reliable, humble and loyal. I have to constantly ask myself, am I any good as a father? And I think there are numerous areas that I've failed, numerous. But I have to keep challenging myself and the challenges come by the changing circumstances, the sea of change that moves in of each of my children's lives and that affects their personality, affects their character, affects their emotions, affects their finances. So the biggest challenge is to, uh, trying to adapt to those challenges and be the best that I can at that moment in time. My dad expects me to be a man and in, when I say a man it's like all the things that you would deem good and strong and firm he expects me to be a rock whenever like things are breaking down I'm not breaking down so say for example uh, a, a tragedy happens in the household someone's passed away to be to be the man of the house is to show strength when nobody else has got it um, to show love when nobody else wants to give love uh, just just to be that person that nobody else is prepared to be. My fathering skills were entirely different when I was a young man because I really only had my dad as a guideline <clears throat> and as I said before there are experiences which I've taken from him and experiences that I've or characters that I've characteristics that I've taken from him and characteristics that I've rejected from him. I knew very early on the type of man I wanted to be. When I was 14, I spoke it aloud that I wanted to have one wife and I wanted to be the father. She was to be the mother of all my children. And I didn't want any children from any other woman and that my children would see me when they went to bed and when they woke up, they would see me. And by and large, it's happened. Of course, I've been away on business a few times. By and large, that's what I've done. My children must know that they have a father and the father is in the house. And I guess my biggest challenge on being a father is to try to be a good father. And as I said, being a good father then, if I employed the same man that I was when I, when I was 19, when I first became a father, if I employed that man now, that man would fail miserably because Firstly, my children have grown in number, <clears throat> they've grown in age, they've grown in experience, they've grown in knowledge, they've grown in ability, many different areas they've grown. And I've had to grow, I've had to grow and adapt to those changes to maintain the status quo and also to maintain the position that I have the ability to deal with pretty much most of their problems. Uh, I remember there was this one time when I was younger I was going on a whole gangster phase where I wanted to be that guy that like, everybody was scared of and type thing so I was completely the opposite to what my father wanted me to be and expected me to be, expected me to be humble, um, I was arrogant, um, expected me to be kind and I wasn't, I was just doing all the wrong things and, in, and from doing the wrong things I was hanging around with the wrong people um, getting myself in, involved in situations that I didn't need to be involved in um, so one night I got caught up in a, a situation where I was surrounded by a, some guys this was when I was younger, I was probably about 15 um, I was surrounded by some guys in terms of like beef 
in terms of beef. And then, so the situation got a bit out of hand, and the guys was just trying to take me up the road. It's like, oh, we're not going to stab him on the main road. Um, we're just going to do him in the corner or something. So uh, hearing this, I panicked, pushed out of it, and then um, I was just surrounded by a, a load of people. And then eventually, cut long story short, I got hit in my face and my jaw broke. It broke in two places. Um, and it just snapped. There have been occasions where I have not been there for my child. And my heart goes out to, we've recently saw on the TV that these two idiots killed this young man as a soldier on the street. My heart goes out to the mother of that child for the barbaric manner in which he was taken from this earth. My heart also goes out to the mother of the, of the boy, the young men, who killed this, this soldier who was defending their right their, to be free and to express themselves. Um, and as a parent, I can only think, I wanted to be there to try and protect my child. And there have been occasions <clears throat> where I've wanted to be there, but I, in high, when I haven't been there, when my children have suffered, um, and it kind of tears you apart that you weren't there to try and protect your child. And the two occasions that particularly come to mind was one where my daughter Tony was um, a young child, and she had a, a, a baby minder because my wife and I used to work. And we noticed that when the baby minder, and the baby minder had a young daughter as well, who was a bit older than Tony. And when the baby minder came to look after in the house, rang the door to relieve us so she could look after Tony, Tony would scream and run upstairs, and we didn't know why. And it was a while afterwards that my, my, my wife was bathing my daughter, and she saw bite marks on her skin. She confronted the nanny, and the nanny confessed that her daughter would bite Tony. Of course, my wife instantly sacked her. But as a father, it, it tears you apart to know that your child was in a position of vulnerability, and um, you were not there to protect me. It's a nightmare, it's an absolute nightmare. That was when she was about two or three, and she's 24 now, and I still think about it. And the other occasion was when my son Lewis was in the street, and he got accosted by three young men. They attacked him, and they broke his jaw, and I went to the hospital, and when I saw his jaw, I saw right through the bone. Cowardly and cowardly, they went up behind him and broke his jaw. And thank God, that's all it was. Because it could have been a lot worse, like this young soldier. But nonetheless, the, um, the feeling of anger and revenge, that uh, testosterone running through your veins dictates, is... Um, are the things that really stick in your heart and will never go away. You just want to be there. When your child is in danger, you want to be there to protect them. And then at that moment in time, as it snapped, I kind of understood why I shouldn't be in the in the wrong places. Uh, the reality kind of hit me. Everything that my, my dad was trying to save me from, I walked into. And then it was like, at that moment in time, I kind of understood why my dad's telling me certain things. But it was like, did I really need to go through that experience for my dad to tell me that? And so, so it was like, yeah, that expectation that my dad was giving me, I completely dishonoured the expectation by going where I wanted to go. But um, it kind of snapped me out of it and put me back into trap with the expectations that my dad wanted to be. Well, it was hard at first trying to accept and go with the new responsibilities and living up to something. But at the end of it, it was like, I was trying to fight something that was good for me. But I was, it's, it's easy to eat the steak uh, when you have dinner, but the broccoli and the beans, never good to eat 
but they're always good for you. But like listening to my dad's advice was like eating your vegetables. It's like at the end of the day, your vegetables are good for you. And as much as you, you don't like it, you'll learn to like it. And the things that it will give to you is so much better. Dad's got to be Superman. <laughs> Dad's got to be Superman. It's just, just it. You've got to be Superman. You ain't got time to be anything else. You've got to be Superman. Because if, if, if that ain't Superman, where is Superman? Uh, my greatest challenge, being a good father. I got a lot of love and respect for him because of that. I can always hear my dad echoing this through, right through, right through time, from when I was a kid all the way through. That inheritance is not when my dad passed away. Inheritance is not what's in the house. As far as I'm concerned, everything in the house can go to everybody else. But the inheritance, true inheritance, is what's inside his head. And if I can.